How's it going everybody? Jared Lutz here with another Diablo 4 video. The server slam is right around the corner, your next and last time to try out Diablo 4 for free, so I wanted to put together a video with all the server slam details, as well as some tips and tricks for getting through all the content to ensure you score those sweet beta rewards. First up, if you don't know what the server slam is, it's essentially an extra beta in order for Blizzard to really test their servers before the game officially launches. This beta includes everything that the last beta included, the prologue, the entirety of Act 1 within the Fractured Peaks, all five classes, the Ashava world boss, dungeon, side quests, all that stuff. The available content remains the same, but there are some other changes this time around. The server slam level cap is 20 instead of the previous cap of 25. The recently announced balance changes to each class will be live. This includes things like the Necromancer Corpse Explosion getting nerfed, as well as the Barbarian and Druid seeing some buffs. Also, the alterations to the world that they announced will be live as well, things like removing backtracking from dungeons and adding chests and events to sellers. Make sure to check out my video right here detailing all of those changes if you'd like to know what's up. The world boss Ashava will also be spawning every three hours during the server slam, that way more people will have the opportunity to engage with a world boss fight. Although Ashava's level is not capped at 20, so make sure you bring some friends along with you or it might be a little bit tough. The beta wolf pack cosmetic item is back, this time as long as you hit level 20 with one character, you'll get this cosmetic when the full game is out. What makes this beta more unique is that there's a brand new cosmetic to earn this time around. The Cry of Ashava Mount Trophy. They essentially cut off a horn of a Shava in order for us to proudly display it alongside our trusty steed. To get this cosmetic, you'll have to defeat a Shava at level 20. So I'd argue that there's no sense in going to fight a Shava until you're level 20. If you show up as a noob level 3 fresh out the storm, you're not going to be helping and you'll likely be dying over and over again. Even if you do manage to get carried through it, you won't get the mount trophy because you have to be level 20 when you defeat a Shava to get it. The last difference between this beta and the others is the legendary drop rates. The first two betas had inflated drop rates so players would actually get playtime with some in order for Blizzard to test the waters of them and get player feedback. This time though, the legendary drop rate will be how it's supposed to be, how it will be at launch, meaning you are going to get significantly less legendaries this time around, and less legendaries means less chance to get legendary powers that synergize with your build. This combined with only being able to reach level 20, you're going to be less powerful in this beta than the previous one, so keep that in mind. Alright, let's talk beta times and preloads. The server slam begins on May 12th, 12pm PDT, and ends on May 14th, 12pm PDT. You can play on all platforms, Windows PC, Xbox Series X and S, Xbox One, and PlayStation 4 and 5. Couch co-op for consoles is available, as well as cross-play and cross-progression. But, your progress from this beta will not carry over to the full game, and also your progress from the last betas does not carry over to this server slam. You'll be able to preload the server slam starting on May 10th at 12pm PDT, this comes directly after the Diablo 4 developer livestream, where they plan to detail the game's battle pass and seasonal content. I'll have a video going over everything we learned from that livestream as soon as possible tomorrow, so stay tuned for that. I'll also leave a link in the description to the Server Slam blog post, so you have easier access to all the info related to beta times, preload times, how to preload, etc. As far as tips and tricks go, let's say you're wanting to speed through the server slam as quickly as possible to nail down those cosmetic rewards within the two day time period. Maybe you're only free to play one day out of the two or maybe less. Here's a few things to consider if you don't have the full two days free to play to essentially speed run to level 20. If your goal is speed, I recommend staying away from the Druid and Barbarian classes, especially if you're planning to play solo, as these two were arguably the weakest in the last beta. Now they did get some changes, but I don't think they're enough for them to surpass the Necromancer, Sorcerer, or Rogue in terms of early game power. Both the Druid and Barbarian rely more on melee than the other classes, and if you're playing solo, every single enemy is going to be aggro to you all the time, while you're up close dealing damage to build up resource in order to cast your other abilities. Being close up to enemies means you're bound to take more damage, pop more health potions, and have the potential to die more often. Where the Rogue, Necromancer, and Sorcerer all can specialize in always at range builds, 
so you essentially never have to get within melee range of enemies. The Rogue and Sorcerer also have mobility skills that allow you to traverse the world at quicker speeds, and the quicker you're moving, the faster you're completing quests and gaining those levels. Now, if you're planning to group up with friends to play, which I recommend doing if you want to speed through content, playing as the Barbarian or Druid will be less of an issue. Once again, because not everything will be aggroed to you all the time, and you'll have other players dealing damage and or providing support. Next tip is you'll definitely want to play on veteran difficulty. This difficulty gives you 20% more experience when slaying monsters. That's going to be big for levels. Veteran is not that hard as the adventurer difficulty is really meant for people who have never played a game like Diablo before. Veteran is pretty much easy for people who have played games like Diablo before. You can also get another 5% extra experience once you reach level 5. If you head over to the Alchemist in Kyovashad, she offers a few elixirs that have various effects. At level 5, the weak Iron Barb elixir unlocks, costing 1000 gold, 5 gallo wine, and 5 bite berry to craft. This elixir increases your armor by 50, thorns by 25, and experience by 5% for 30 minutes. Gallowine and Biteberry are plants that can be found on the ground in the Fractured Peaks, so just make sure you're grabbing any plants that you find as you play, and you'll have more than enough for these elixirs. Once you reach level 10, another elixir unlocks called the Weak Third Eye Elixir. This gives you 5% extra experience as well, but also gives you 5% increased dodge. This costs Gallowine and Howler Moss instead. Also, you can't stack these elixirs, so just use one at a time every 30 minutes. The duration of these elixirs will show up above your experience bar, so you can keep track of when they're about to end. I also recommend just picking up every single quest you come across. You don't have to do each and every side quest, but as you're completing main quest objectives, you might accidentally complete a side quest at the same time. As you're playing and doing main quest objectives, make sure you're activating every waypoint you come across for easy fast travel, activating any Shrines of Lilith you find, and doing any events that spawn or clearing out any cellars you come across, as these will give you XP and chests. Lastly, since you won't be finding many build-defining legendaries unless you're extremely lucky, when you come across a dungeon, check the map to see what legendary power you get from completing it, and if it's something your character would benefit from, I suggest running through it, that way you have a legendary power unlocked in your codex, that you can apply to your gear. This will help you flesh out a build a little bit more, make you a little bit stronger for that Ashava fight at level 20. You gotta remember that you aren't going to be able to have a crazy build at level 20. 20 levels is literally a fifth of the total levels in the game. You won't be able to reach some of the skills you were able to in the previous betas, and you won't be getting that many legendaries, if any. The Ashava world boss is something that multiple groups of players can team up together to take on, so you'll likely have a large group of players alongside you while you're there, especially if you're grouped up yourself. And that rounds up some tips for the Server Slam weekend, as well as all the info regarding the event that you need to know. Once again, tomorrow I have another video out detailing all the Battle Pass and Season info we get from the developer livestream. I also plan on doing beginner guides for each class in Diablo 4 kinda aimed at newer players, that way you have a decent understanding of each class and how they work going into launch day. So if you are new to the Diablo series or action RPGs slash dungeon crawlers in general, consider subscribing, as the plan is for this channel to be a hub for all new players who are interested in playing Diablo 4, complete with class guides, build guides, videos on how each system of the game works, and more, as well as keeping you up to date with all the news for the game throughout its life cycle. With that being said, thanks for watching, comment down below what class you plan on rocking for the server slam, I'm personally going with Rogue, drop a like if this video helped you out at all, and I'll see you next time, peace.